G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is the Gung's Pistol. That's what it says up here, that's what I'm gonna call it. Although I could probably call it the Cyberpunk Pistol, because this weapon is of that design. Albeit it'll sound a little bit more generic that way, but screw it, I'm gonna go with it. Anyways, with this weapon is a somewhat customizable standalone pistol using the Deliver animations. Not too much to tell about it, we'll get right into the attachments. And first of all, we wanna go for... Um, some receivers here. You get three groups of receivers here, just the standard stuff, and you've also got steel, and then titanium. Titanium will do less damage than the upgraded steel, but it'll um, incur less weight. So yeah, if you want to use this thing on survival difficulty and make the most out of your power to weight ratio, then it's not a bad idea to do that. Although you've got the steel receivers, which do a little bit better damage, plus the weight is pretty much negligible anyway. This thing is already super light as it is. Anyways, for the barrels, we'll go for a hard and new barrel for the best damage there, and we'll move on from that. We can improve our recoil and accuracy and all that with the comfort grip, just like the deliverer. And moving on to the magazines, we'll go ahead and chuck in a big old stick mag there and move on. No, can't do too much here, but there is a hollow sight there if you want to increase your bat efficiency, as well as a range of colors of glowing iron sights, which look kind of cool. We'll definitely get to those things when we make our automatic variant. Of course, there's a suppressor. We're going to chuck that on because there's no reason not to. And you can change the caliber of this weapon. You can get it to a nice 222 damage with the 45s, but it will give you a little bit of a fire rate penalty. This thing is already semi-auto anyway, so sure, we're going to go ahead and chuck in some 45s. If you chuck in 38 calibers, whilst you lose, uh, lose a little bit of that um, damage, you actually gain some fire rate, so it might be useful using that in an automatic variant, especially since the 38s are really cheap. And you can change the skin on this, which just changes the colors of basically the side there, so that's fine. We'll go for a bit of ruby there, because it's my mother's middle name, and there we go. We've got a legendary effect slot here if we need it. We will probably not need it with 222 damage. Okay, we'll create a semi-auto one. No one, full auto one. And I'll see you in Gunners Plaza. Like we ever go anywhere else. Ah, interestingly, the uh, caliber conversions don't actually affect the automatic receiver's fire rate. So that's something to think about. Right, let's get started in here, and here is our cyberpunk pistol in first person. It's a very minimalist weapon, it doesn't look very big at all. Personally, I kind of like the look of a giant 10mm pistol in your hands, but maybe this one is more for a concealed purpose. Never mind. So, going around the corner with our little reflex sight on this. We can get pretty decent damage on this, which is good. If we can nail some cheeky headshots, I believe our damage would be even better. Yes, it was. We are able to one-shot that gunner from that. So that's good stuff. Ah, uh, yes, we've still got more scripted spawns running in here. I've really meant to turn that mod off, but I keep forgetting, so whatever. That's a little bit of a shame. Almost detected. There we are. Okay. Now, I'm firing this as fast as I bloody well can, and as you can tell, the fire rate isn't too fast. But that's okay, because I'm feeling like this thing has enough punch to not really require all that high of a fire rate. I'm also feeling the tiny little dot that you get on the reflex sight makes me more accurate. I always used to like having um, the small dots on the reflex sights in Battlefield, because I always felt it made me a little bit more accurate. That's why I never liked the American reflex sight in that game, because it was just there in your face and the dot was huge. Wasn't great for long range shooting, but okay, we've pissed off a lot of gunners here. Hello, me. Meet the real me. And my many VAT shots. Yeah, you're gonna survive this. Okay, we've disarmed the other Bridget of her weapon. She goes to pick it up again. Go. 419 damage on that cheeky headshot there, and this should kill her. Hope that gun falls down so no one else can grab it up here. And we're back into caution. What a perfect time to get some sneak attack crits going. So, whilst you're standing there and we get that strange bat angle, we'll go ahead and start sneak attack critting everything. We should be okay. We're in the shadows here. We're like ninja warriors, not being spotted from anything really. Also, we've found a sweet spot where people don't um, throw grenades every two seconds, so yeah. 
you know those boss fights that you can find those spots where they can't hit you in video games and you pass the game easily because of it? Well, this is kind of like the equivalent of that. And we're gonna get these sneak attack criticals until the cows come home, apparently. Everyone's panic firing at me at this point, but nobody's hitting me. It's weird because they sort of know where you are. They'll fire generally um, at you, you know, like a ballistic path, and obviously the bullets would be hitting the bottom of whatever this is in my general direction. So they're kind of on the money, but they aren't, which is really strange. Man, if I was these gunners, I'd be firing off the top where those sandbags are. That's where I'd be putting my bullets, but no. Well, that AI doesn't work like real life. I don't think you need me saying that. Also, I just got irradiated somehow. Either one of you buggers has some sort of irradiated weapon, or maybe you just have a radium rifle in your inventory. Okay, this is ridiculous. It's, I'm not even being detected. This thing is super ultra quiet here, which is bizarre. Okay, now we're detected, we're finally down with them, and even without the sneak attack criticals backing our damage up, as you can tell, we're still doing a whole lot of damage with this, which is kind of strange. And we are playing on very hard difficulty, so we are getting that half damage penalty, but this thing seems to be holding its own pretty well regardless. Got plenty of bullets in our 24 round mag, which is basically standard when it comes to um, long mags for your pistol, so there's nothing to complain about there. And the rate of fire obviously makes it so we can fire a little bit longer before having to reload, which is useful for sustained things. And uh, yeah, you'll end up missing a lot less bullets sometimes when you aren't just slowing them out very in a constant state. I hope that makes sense. The sounds on this thing are purely vanilla, so there's no reason for me to comment on those. They do work for what they are, though. You could probably get away with making the deliverer sound just in an automatic form because it doesn't fire that fast and the sound wouldn't cut over itself and sound really weird. So I'm pretty sure you could get away with doing something like that. Right, I will move back over to our... Wow, you just got knocked on your ass for some reason. I think one of the traps went off. Sometimes the traps respawn, but they never hurt me because I've got light step. So that's nice. Righto, one more dude or dudette in here. She's easily taken out with a couple of headshots there. Having an easy time with headshots today. My aim is somewhat better than what it usually is, which is bizarre because I usually aim like crap. And right now I'm super tired because this work today is hard, but um, it doesn't really matter because, uh, yeah, we're doing okay. Also, it makes no sense because I upload these the morning after I record them. I record them. I let them upload overnight because my internet is <laughs> slow. So, yeah, it's going to bear no sort of uh, consequence by tomorrow morning, provided that I get a good night's sleep, which I intend to. That's something that you take for granted when you're younger, but you, as you get older, you really want that good night's sleep. Let me tell you that much. Okay, with that orange lighting of sunset here in Gunners Plaza, that is about it for this particular area. We breezed through it pretty fast, even, yeah, we've, even with all of the more scripted spawns, we only lost half a health bar. I've had much bigger rifles, um, you know, take more health off me when going through Gunners Plaza than this. So, yeah, it's actually performing pretty well despite its size. As Yoda said, size matters not. So I teleported to uh, this, what's it called? This stupid sediment. Is it Tappington Boathouse? Yes, it is. And there was a raider attack happening, and one of these dudes happened to have a nocturnal fat man on them. That's actually kind of good for right now. So yeah, we'll pick that up. We might use it if we're in a pinch, but also this one had a bloody tire iron. Yeah, these guys weren't exactly created equal now, were they? Righto, so the reason I teleported in this sort of a direction we're near Rest Everett's Estates, which is um, crawling with lots of uh, super mutants, which uh, in the base game are fine, but with the monster mod that I have, which makes Swan and all the other monsters appear, yeah, there's also a giant doggo over here. So yes, surprise fat man strike. Wow, that actually did so much damage, I'm impressed. Well, with that head start on this fight, we'll just go ahead and sneak attack crit him.
Wow, we are just like properly like in some sort of state of stealth boy because we are not getting detected by anything at this point. I'm going to shoot him in the bum. Okay, now we should be getting into the fight. I wonder if you'll howl like all of the other little doggos. Probably not. It'd probably just leave him a little bit too vulnerable. Also, I remember him being able to bite from that. Oh good, now every super mutant and their mother knows I'm here. Well, so much for that ninja warrior new thing. Ow, you bastard. That hurt. Okay, I'm gonna lead you over in this direction. Now, from what I remember about the mutant doggos is they don't really bite you when you're running away from them, like Death Claws. They have honor about them. They won't attack you. They won't bite you on the bum. Death Claws are happy to claw you from wherever, so yeah, those bastards have got no honor of them, but these Wasteland Mutant Hound FEV doggos, they know what's up. They're honorable warriors that take crits like nothing's even wrong. Okay, let's just go over here now, and we'll drag them into the settlement. Why the hell not? He's not going to be able to find his way around, is he? Oh, he's, he's, he got further than I expected, which is uh, something. Good, uh, good job for that AI also. Let's just not target his... Where's your head? There it is. Okay. It's rarely that I do target mutant hounds and bats, as you can tell, because I'm completely unfamiliar with how their bats thing stacks up. Okay. It's not even... Ooh. Okay, it looks like Brahmins are now submarines. That's useful. Maybe that's how they get to Spectacle Island if you decide to set up a supply line there. Let's bring out our automatic one. Check out how this thing works in bats. Just gotta hunt him down. Where are you, mate? He's all the way over there. Well, he was getting around, so uh, good on you, AI. You've actually impressed me today, which, you know, I don't say lightly. We're not getting any sneak attack crits because he's, uh, he's, he's being attacked by a fucking mosquito. Good. I like it. Would you mind getting rid of that mosquito? Or can you not reach him? Because he's... Nope, there we go. Got him with like a 750 damage strike there. That'll get him alright. Okay, we'll just let Concentrated Fire pick up the slack of the accuracy from this range. And a crit there gives us about 3 bursts of 380, which is a whole lot of damage. And there we go. He somersaults right into a tree as we finish off that fight there. It was super easy with our fat man. I'm going to bring it out again. Hold on, I just got to reload my fat man. I'm going to survive this, aren't I? No, I don't. Maybe if it was a critical, I'd survive it, right? Out of curiosity, I actually want to see if the nocturnal fat man can knock out the Wendigo in one hit. Bombs away, motherfucker. Here it comes. Okay, can mutate him. I'm pretty sure I saw 10,000 damage there. So, clock the old 10k on him, which is uh, enough to get him nice and mutated. And now we can just cheese the rest with sneak attack criticals. This thing makes you invisible, I swear. Okay, I think that is about enough for this particular weapon. I didn't really, I didn't plan on having a fat man in this video, but I saw the drop and I was wondering how it would work. So there you go, a two-in-one voyeur. There's a synth replica over there. Let's crit him. Right in the noggin. Okay, so if you'd like to see this weapon, no, not this weapon, this weapon in your game, check out the description below. There shall be a link down there. I'm not sure how old this one is. I, I'm assuming it's pretty old because it went under my radar. I've never seen it before, but I'm presently surprised by this pistol. Presently and pleasantly surprised by this pistol. Right here, right now, I'm actually surprised with it, and it's also a pleasant feeling. That's what I'm getting at. So, yeah, check out the description if you want to see this in your game. Make sure you get Ace Operator and use it with a suppressor to see the best damage like I did. What are those guys doing over there? I'm going to crit everything with a fat man. If these things aren't in 76, I'm going to be very surprised. Also, did you see all those raiders? Kablooms. And on that bombshell, I'm going to steal that thing from Top Gear. Thank you for watching, guys. I'm out.